This is the overview section. We're going to give a basic description of the components in a typical tank farm. And the first thing we're going to look at is the dispensing area. This is the most common area that's going to be visited by the public. It's where the retail sales take place. Typically, the dispenser is installed in some kind of a security enclosure to protect it from theft and vandalism. It's got a lockable gate, and then we can get in, and inside is the actual dispenser that you would access for day-to-day -day sales operation. One of the things I want to point out is that near every dispenser, there will be an emergency shutoff switch. This is required by code. There's a device that allows you, in the event of a fire or a spill, to push the red button and immediately shut down the entire dispensing operation. Now we're going to go over and look at the bulk tank farm, the, the main facility where all the tanks and storage are. And the first thing we'll point out here is that the whole tank farm is enclosed by a security fence. That's also a very important aspect of the tank farm, to have a secure fence to keep uh, children out and to prevent theft and vandalism. So we want to always make sure that that security fence is intact, that the gates are kept closed and locked except when it's in use. On the security fence there are signs. The typical scheme is to use black signs for information and instructional placards and red signs for warning and caution signs. So it's important that a person become familiar with the signage as a general safety and operating procedures and are, are familiar with that and follow the instructions on those. Now we're going to go inside the security and look at the tank farm. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the control panel. This is an electrical control system that kind of governs the operation of all the pumps, the lights, and the transfer systems within the tank farm. This is a fairly typical control panel and the uh, system is on. That means we're operating for the day. We can tell the power is on and we're up and running. The exterior lights are off because we have normal daylight. All the other functions underneath this window are things that you use for specific procedures that we'll get into later. Now we'll go take a look at the rest of the facility here. One of the things I'm going to point out in this tank farm, and this is common in a lot of facilities but not all, is we have a truck loading area. It's a uh, bulk facility where fuel can be loaded into a truck for delivery to other facilities within the community. And it has uh, secondary containment along with it to catch any spills that may happen in the truck loading area. Okay, over here we have bulk storage tanks. They're labeled with the product and the capacity on them. The uh, bulk storage tanks, these are all diesel and they are installed within a secondary containment dike that uh, is designed to contain a spill should uh, the piping or one of the tanks fail. And that's a very typical item. You'll see that in every tank farm. There are bulk storage tanks where the delivery from the barge or the airplane, the direct delivery, comes in and is stored in bulk to then be transferred and dispensed and used through the rest of the facility. Okay, we're looking at the dispensing tank now. This is the unleaded gasoline. Again, it's labeled with the product and the capacity on it. This tank is directly connected by pipeline to the dispenser that we looked at earlier. And up on top, you'll see a, a pump, the red pump up on the highest point there. That's a submersible pump that's used to pump product out to the dispenser. So basically, this tank has to be filled periodically to provide a supply of gasoline out to the dispenser. Okay, now we're going to go around and take a look at some of the other pumps and features in the facility. What we're looking at here is the marine header. This is the area where the bulk transfer occurs. The barge will pull up and they make their hose connection to the end of this uh, cam lock on this valve. We have a check valve, a rising stem gate valve. Uh, this is typically where the bulk transfer occurs. Now normally uh, this is remote from the facility. In this case we're near the river and the marine header is actually inside the secondary containment. At the secondary containment, you'll also typically see a drip pan of some sorts. The Coast Guard requires for marine transfers an 84-gallon capacity drip pan, so this is an essential part of the facility here. We'll also note that on the valves, they've been labeled with color-coded tags that tell the product and uh, the function of the valve, and, and the, we also have a permanent label on there where the, the product is so you don't cross up your deliveries. Now we'll start looking at some specific components in the tank farm, the typical things you would see. And first we could start right here. Uh, this device is a check valve. It's a one-way flapper valve and typically on one side, in this case it's on the opposite side, there's an arrow that gives you the direction of flow so you can see what it is. This is called a rising stem gate valve. When the stem is down at the handle level, it's closed. 
when the when you open it up you'll see the stem rise up that corresponds to the gate rising in it then we'll take a look at a typical ball valve and they're uh, oriented to be a quarter turn operation so when the handle is perpendicular to the pipe they're closed and when the handle is parallel to the pipe it's open and it's been it has a locking mechanism so that you can lock it in the uh, open or closed position. This is a Y strainer. It's designed to take particles and debris out of the uh, flow of the fluid to protect pumps and sensitive valves. Uh, this is a flexible connector. These are designed to allow movement in the pipe and to make it easier to take things apart, reassemble them. On one end of this flex connector, we see a flanged joint. These are bolted together. This allows the uh, connection to be removed so we can replace a pump or service an item when it's required. If you follow this piping up, the small diameter piping up at the top of the tank there, you'll see a pressure relief valve. Those are installed to prevent overpressure of pipelines uh, from the fluid heating up in the sun. Here we have a filter. This is a pipeline filter that has been installed in this case to prevent water from getting into a transfer pipeline. It's got a water blocking element in it. Uh, sometimes you'll see these at truck racks or other areas where you want to make sure that you have clean fuel without any water or sediment in it. What we're looking at here is a transfer pump. This is a centrifugal style pump. It is used to transfer product from a bulk storage tank into a dispensing tank. Sometimes this type of pump is also used to transfer product into the truck loading area or to a remote tank at another facility. And so this is a very common item. Sometimes they'll be installed inside of a pump box in places where they have a lot of corrosion and a severe environment. This is referred to as an actuator valve. What it is is a standard quarter turn ball valve that has a motor operator head mounted on it. And what it does is anytime the day tank is calling for fuel, it will automatically open the valve while the pump is running. When the day tank is full, then the valve will automatically close. These are also used in transfer pipelines from tank to tank and other applications. Typically on the control panel at the day tank or the uh, main bulk tank farm control panel, there will be an indicator light that will say actuator valve open. Anytime the pointer moves off of the closed position, it will uh, light the light indicating that the valve is in the open position. In the unlikely event that this valve sticks either closed or open, you can grab the shaft of it with a pair of channel locks and manually operate the valve. This should only be done in an emergency situation. If you have that situation occur where you have to manually operate this valve, you would need to check your controls or check the valve and replace the defective component to get your automatic system back in operation. Okay, every tank farm will have some kind of a manifold piping that connects the tanks to each other, the tanks to the pumps, and the various dispensers and other devices. It's uh, basically the heart of the operation of the system. It's very important that every tank farm operator understand their piping system and know the function of, of everything in it. Uh, typically, these will be possibly color-coded either by painting or by tags and, and show the operation of it. So the operator needs to be familiar with what product is in what pipeline, where all the valves are, what the functions of the valves are. In this tank farm, we have uh, explicit nameplates. They're color-coded according to the product or the function, and they'll tell whether the valve is normally open or normally closed. Uh, some tank farms may just have a simple little brass tag that says NC for normally closed or NO for normally open. One of the most important things for an operator to do is familiarize themselves with the location of all the valves in the facility and whether they're normally open or normally closed. And any inspection should include verifying that the valves are in their proper position and that they remain locked in the proper position. Okay, we're on top of the dispensing tank and we're just going to look at some of the typical components you would see. Here's a close-up of the submersible pump that we mentioned earlier. This is the pump that supplies fuel to the dispenser. Sometimes these are also used for uh, transferring to an adjacent tank. Here we have a float switch. This is an electrical switch that controls the level of fuel in the tank, provides alarm and shutdown in the event of an overfill or a low tank level. Uh, right here we have a clock gauge. This is a very common device you'll see on most horizontal tanks. And they read just like a clock. Short hand is feet, long hand is inches. So we currently have five foot, eight and a half inches of fuel in this tank farm, or in this tank. 
And right next to it, we have a gauge hatch. This is a manual gauging port that you can open up and use a, a, a dipstick or a tape measure to verify the level and also check for the water in the tank. Then we'll look at the other end at a couple of venting devices. Okay, this is the uh, normal breather vent for the tank. It's a pressure vacuum vent. When you're drawing fuel out of the tank, it uh, relieves on vacuum, lets air in, and then when you're filling the tank up or when the, the product heats up and vents, it relieves out the top. And uh, this is just a common breather. This one is also has a whistle alarm in the event of an overfill. This uh, vent will actually whistle. Okay, these are emergency vents. This is a device that is normally closed and would only open in the event of a fire where the tank had to relieve a lot of fumes. So they're, they got a weighted lid that's normally closed that will raise up in the event of a fire. This tank, because it's a double wall tank, actually has two and they're labeled primary emergency vent for the inner tank, secondary emergency vent for the outer tank. This is the fill connection for the dispensing tank. The uh, fuel is pr pumped from the adjacent bulk tank, comes up here through a strainer, through a check valve, and it goes into the top of the tank. And right underneath this connection is a fill limiter. It's a mechanical float type valve that will shut off on a high level automatically. Okay, on this tank we have a top mounted water draw. In the event that water accumulates in the bottom of the tank, this can be used to remove the water. It's uh, got a threaded cap that you would remove and then thread on a barrel pump to pump the uh, water off the bottom of the tank. And this drop tube goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank. Okay, now we're going to look at the uh, secondary containment. This is a very essential feature to any tank farm to prevent spills and damage to the environment. A, typically, you'll see either an earthen wall dike, which is this natural slope, or uh, sometimes in facilities we use a vertical wall. We had to use it here on one side because of space constraints. And uh, behind this sheet metal is a membrane liner that's uh, liquid tight and oil resistant. And that also goes up underneath the gravel on the side slope. So this whole entire secondary containment area is liquid tight and will hold water or spilled product. And then within that we have a uh, sump that is used for removing stormwater because every time it rains or the snow melts, the water will accumulate in the dike and it has to be removed.